Hello again, and welcome to Winning with the Wrangler at Dick Powell's Leadership Corner, brought to you by Earth, Wind, Fire, Water, Training and Development, where our passion is building leaders of today and tomorrow. Leaders, we're going to uh, touch a subject. Miss Robin and I have been working with some organizations, and we've seen a common thread starting to run through them that's so dangerous in our society today. Today's topic, read it for us, Miss Robin. <laughs> Death knells of organizations. Who, what, where, when, and why they decide to close the doors and throw away the key. And let me set this up by saying that we live in Florida off US 19. If you've ever been here, you're probably pretty familiar with that six lane highway. <clears throat> and we drove 50 miles yesterday yep. up, up 19 in the church bus and noticed how many businesses had closed and how many things like. Um, stores the chains of stores yeah, chains. are closed and how many especially harbor freight sales they all had going out of business sales on, signs on everything, everything must, must go, go. Um, and I kind of when I was watching coming back that you know the Toys R Us are all closing the Kmart's are closing um, and they've been in trouble for a long time Sears Kmart has been really struggling so uh, then we think about the number of churches that are closing because they can't afford to keep the doors open. We know a couple in our area have closed because the roof is in such bad shape that it's not safe to be in the building and they can't afford to fix it. Mm -hmm. How many um, clubs we've been involved in or uh, business organizations and things that have just closed over the past few years because of, of, of the same reasons, I think. I think the, the thread that caused all this runs through everything. But again, even um, I was thinking about scout troops over the years that had to close their doors. And how did that happen and why did it happen? Well, we, we've seen Girl Scout troops, Boy mm -hmm. Scout troops, uh, youth groups all around. We've seen yes. uh, Rotaries and Kiwanis and... Um, all of those organizations, uh, business you, organizations. We've been involved with a lot of local business oh organizations that, that kind of parallel a BNI or an MPI, but uh, a couple different things that make them unique. They, they just start going and, away. And they, they're disappearing. They're just disappearing. So, so why? So th this common thread, though, that what we're seeing is, okay, it really is it's disturbing because they, they, they've they really come to the point where they just throw away the key. I mean, well, it's, it's, just time. it's close up the door. So uh, you have to ask, start asking the questions, you know, did they forget to pay attention to the evolving needs, mm -hmm. wants, shopping practices? Consistently. Current events? Right. I mean, did they just, to just always do things the way they've always done them and so after 50 years they just dead yeah some of them are probably lucky they stayed in business that long and the the most um shocking moments after the first of the year when toys of Our, toys R us announced they were closing all the stories and i thought wow where are parents going to go buy toys well obviously they're closing because parents aren't buying toys at toys R us they are buying them everywhere else oh they're buying them everywhere well after the first of the year they, they, they announced that they were going to close some stores yeah and then last week it was oh, we're going to go wall we're going to and the original plan was to close everything for four or five years, see how things had evolved. If they'd evolved back where people wanted to see, touch, and feel the toy before they just bought it online or whatever. And they would come back in a different a different model. Well, my question is, why didn't they notice that five or ten years ago when th that really started to jump and you, change their model then? Well, do you think it's because when you're making money, when things are going well, right? that you don't look down the road or you don't look around you? Correct. And we know that that's the time where you really need to take a look. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, it's fun. Celebrate that. But you need to, uh, you probably so, need to take a look to make sure you stay there. So I, there's this question you have written here. I, I have to, I have to really, I'm going to follow up on this. It should we blame someone or should we just let them go? And I guess what I'm asking is, is that, is there a time when the club, the organization, the company, the group has just outlived its purple purpose and usefulness? I don't think that's the case in most cases. Okay. I think the case is they've been they've been floating through life for a few years doing what they've always done, the way they've always done it, when they've always done it, and they haven't possibly in a lot of organizations added new members. And if they did add new members, they didn't give the new members a chance to share their ideas for going okay. forward. 
and they're just sort of um, in a whirlpool. So that kind of goes back to the leadership model. Yeah, I mean, it's a leadership if, model. If we're not continually bringing more leaders in, building Changing. more leaders, mm -hmm. if we're not continuing. And I think that also goes back to legacy. Right. Lee. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I look at legacy as, as uh, I, I'm not going to always be able to do the job I'm doing. I'm not going to be always right. be able to be part of the organization I'm a part of. Who am I bringing up behind me? Who who am I teaching? Who and, am I learning? Who am I mentoring? Right, and that person doesn't have to be a little clone of you. No, I know. It needs oh, no. to be a little different because things have to change. Well, I think that's the. But that's that's the that's the crazy part about this. We keep looking at uh, not cloning, but reproducing ourselves. I, what I see the groups that are that are that are that are kind of diminishing and going away is is they want all the people in in the group to be like them, mm. think like oh. they do, talk like they do, yeah. dress like they do. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and when I was in in scouting, I, I oh, thought okay. I'd be quite honest with you, I thought it was good that we all dress the same way. But no, they're dressing okay. the same way or dressing similarly says a lot. I, I I thought it was a great way to. Just make everybody equal or and level that, the game. Right. And that was the purpose. And, and it really disturbs me now when, when everybody comes in part uniform and part blue jeans and part this. And, and, and it's just and all haphazard. The, and, and so yeah. there's no respect. And I think that's the, one of the things that in that organization they they have not identified. But I think it's this respect thing. There's this, I'm, 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 I'm really struggling with the respect, even in churches today. Oh. There's, there's no respect. Look, I like to go casual like everybody else once in a while and, and things. But I think there's certain times you go to a wedding, you should you should dress properly. You know, that's coat and tie for man and, and a dress for a lady. Okay? Or, or, or you know, I, I just I don't get it. You go to a business meeting. Um, and people come in and flip flops and, and shorts that are raggedy ed and they're not dressed appropriately for their right. their female attire. Um, that's just lack of respect for themselves and the people around them. And I think that that's a killer. I, I, I'm I sorry. Think, I, I think it's a killer. I, I think it's a killer. Um, someone mentioned to me yesterday that they had visited a church where nobody had nobody nobody got dressed up. And I said, oh, that's you know. And she says, no, you don't understand. Nobody gets dressed to go to church and it just something's missing and I think it's the respect and the honor to where you're going that you would dress still appropriately I mean in parts of the country you still wouldn't go into a, a restaurant at night without a, a jacket and tie they wouldn't let you in my, my grandfather raised me to understand that appropriate dress says a lot about you okay now, I'm, I'm maybe I'm just old but I think when you are not appropriate. I think that that's that's what makes these groups die quickly. Right. There's no respect. Okay. Not right down the line, there's no respect. And I think that's one of them. The 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 part with the the uh, Harbor Freight or 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 Toys R Us, I, I just don't think they 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 stayed on top of what was happening in the world. I think that's part, and I think it, it, it's it's broader than that. They didn't they didn't pay attention to their market where they are. How many mm -hmm. people? Well, how, how many, many other, stores they how have? How many other stores? I mean, my goodness, Harbor Freight, it, just in our little area, oh there's gosh. 10 stores. And I wondered, I thought, okay, we actually shop at three or four of them. <laughs> I do. Because sometimes <laughs> you couldn't find what you want. Well, we bought those chairs, and we had to go to three to get the chairs because they didn't have them at the other two. Well, they ran out. They, yeah. they had run out. They were they were uh, lawn chairs, folding canvas lawn chairs. Um, and we wanted those specific chairs for a specific reason, like they're comfortable. And um, we had to go to three and stores. And they fit my them. camper. Okay. They fit the camper really well. So that that was one point. But, you know, we could have gone, you know, one of those stores could have been eliminated. Maybe the other two would have done better. I, I don't know. I don't, but now the they're all closing. With, the, yeah, they're, they're all closing, which leaves empty retail space all so, over the place. Well, look at Kmart. Kmart probably felt when Walmart moved in across the country, and we were one of the last areas to have a Walmart because we had so many people here. They were mostly for um, to accommodate rural, rural areas, mm -hmm. and we're pretty densely populated. So Walmart came in, and they could have been um, a nice balance to Kmart. Right, right. And I don't know what Kmart did in the long run, but let me tell you, it's a lot nicer to shop at a Walmart than it was to shop at a Kmart. <sighs> So where am I going to go shopping? But I, th I think we're still looking at this. This whole piece is: did they outlive their usefulness? Yeah, or did they not pay attention? Did they to not the pay attention, or what? Mm -hmm. The churches that I see fail, even our area where we live, we're very densely populated here in Pinellas County. 
there's a church within a, a quarter mile of any way you turn. Oh yeah, easy. Okay, there's that many. And because there's that many, there's lots of choices. And when there's lots of choices, you it's not a bad thing. But I don't know if you can you can serve that many different little pieces all the time. Yeah, and one of the things we talked about a couple years ago about the churches was they um, overlap on their missions and ministries. And that's huge. And that's huge. So if the church down the street is having success with a specific ministry, then why would you duplicate that ministry? Do something else. Um, and I, I, I think know. those are the things they, they, that I feel they still are not looking at. So, gosh, I hate to ask this question. I really do. I really hate to ask this question. Could the organization be saved or revived? And do revivals, do they work in the long run or just temporary? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't either, but I, I, I still think it's some organizations that just outlive their their usefulness. Well, again, uh, I mean, the, net, the networking groups, I'm going to tell you, yeah. is, is just, they've just about out used, outdone their usefulness because yeah. they've become a place for people who are starting their own companies, but they're people who don't know what it means to start their own company. Yeah, they don't know what they don't know. You know, um, and, <laughs> and they go to these free advice places to get free advice. And when you get free advice, it's worth exactly free. Sometimes it's worth exactly what you pay for. It. Um, mm -hmm. So that's the danger zone. Um, and, and I just see them floundering, floundering, floundering. It, 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 it just disturbs me so much. Well, in that case, we know a couple of the ones that we were in that sort of um, are dissolving. Fizzle. Fizzle. Okay. They're, the fizzles, fizzle. The fizzles flow. So, so maybe they just need to or, or be they, let go. They, they, they really shouldn't be revived. Or they, or they should have paid attention to what people were telling them along the way that things needed to alter the way they were doing. <laughs> or they need to have, a lot of them have minimum expectations from the membership. The first ones we were in 15, 20 years ago, you were expected you as a have, member you have, yeah, to you do have certain things and fulfill certain things. And one of the big ones was referrals. But but I you know just was asked on a board of board of a uh, corporation, and, <laughs> and I, I, I I walked in the first man said, do do I get some expectations? Do what yeah. do you expect me to do? Do I, do I have to do I need to do like most boards, pay some money and right. or, or be involved? And they went, oh, uh -huh. we've never thought of that. And yeah. I said, oh, that, and so how are you doing? Well, we're struggling. We we can't seem to, to get people to join, and we can't seem to beat people to come. And I said, oh, you're struggling. Did you ask them why? Or they huh. come once and don't come back. They come twice and don't come back. <laughs> you, know? you know, so there's always I mean, been. Oh, well, maybe you just need to go away. There's uh, always in a lot of these organizations a rule of thirds. Where so, if, you know, do could the organization be saved or revived? But then you have to ask the question: Is this some place I want to put my time and, and effort into? And like I was alluding to the rule of thirds where we found out there was a third of the people in any organization that stay forever and ever. Yeah. Um, there's a third of the people that come, use it for a couple months, and they, they know they've gotten all the business they're going to get out of it, or they've done everything they can do, or they can't fight the third that never goes away, and they go away. And then there's a third that stays for medium length of time until oh. something happens. They do their they best go. to try to take and fit in whatnot. And I think that's so across the board. How do you know whether or when to decide to fish or cut bait? It's one of my favorite terms, fish or cut bait, fish or cut bait. You know, you've got here, set a time frame, have a list, if then, mile right. markers. <gasps> Tell me about this if then mile well, markers because I, I, I use them all the time and you do too, but I'm not so sure everybody out there understands um, that. They're, they're just ways to gauge if you're moving forward or not. And where do you put these uh, if then mile markers? I would put them in my, um, in my journal. In your journal? Yeah, if you were looking to whether you should stay or leave an organization, uh -huh. and, and we've been through this subconsciously more than consciously. Um, um, I'm pretty go, conscious about it nowadays. If, I, if, if I'm in a business organization that's referral-based and I don't get a referral that actually turns into an um, exchange of dollars for a product within a certain length of time, then I obviously don't need to be spending my time there. Exactly. It's costing me money to make no money. Exactly. Um, so then you would leave. And, but you and do I need to spend a, a certain that. amount of time to, so to get people to know you and those kinds of You need to give it a chance. Okay. And you need to be intentional about um, talking with people about their business and everything else. The so same thing with a, a, a civic club or, or any organization. Am I effective here? Is it's good use of my time? And, is and it I feeding think that's me? What, Am I feeding it? I think that's what, well, that's a great question right yeah. there. Are, are, is it feeding you? Is it feed, are you feeding it? Right. Am I the, um, <laughs> am I the consumer or because the consumer? I think that 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 is the one of the mile markers. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's a marker. Okay. So if you're looking to leave an organization, you would probably make a list of things that you would expect, your expectations out of the organization. And as they hit those, you might want to check them off. I know you're disagreeing. You might want to check them off, but it's a way to be consciously evaluating your time and your, and your energy. I, I am a huge person who asks what the expectations are. Mm -hmm. I like to know what's expected of me within the organization. I also know what, what what the organization you know is going to do for me. I think it has to be a two-way street. But I, I think it's more than that. I think that when people when these organizations start to close down, that the more that we're looking at them, that they're having some same little situations. And one is 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 they they're doing the same thing the same way for for a long time. <laughs> And not building leadership, not bringing more people, not encouraging people. And leaders, here, here's what happens when, when you're doing it all. When you're doing it all and, and somebody comes into the organization and it's great, let's have, but they sit down and they don't have a job. They don't have anything mm -hmm. to, to, to feel connected. And they see the old leadership doing all the jobs and the new person's never asked to be involved or get, you know, do anything. What you're saying, you're sending a silent message to them that they're not good enough. Or they don't need you. Well, we don't need you. It's nice to have your money. Well, we like your money, but we don't need you. So, you know, I, I think I think that's well, I think that's one of the death death markers. Right. And the other part of this is um, when people do leave, do you do an exit interview? Um, we just hit this somewhere with uh with churches and people leave the church why are they leaving it's it's a huge piece um and yeah then maybe there should be an, inter an an entrance interview where they want to join the church and you say why do you want to join this church and what are your expectations from us and what, what should our expectations from you be but, and how does this work out as a long-term relationship and and i do believe that i hate to go backwards sometimes but in the past that was part of of the entrance into an organization i remember right. there was one organization that i had to sit with uh, the leadership group and and explain to them why I wanted to join, why I wanted to be a member. And, and, but when I left, they could have cared less. <laughs> well, there was that one of those groups where they never actually, you never had, there was, when they I were never, doing I volunteer never, work, the, the list came by, it was always filled with the same old people doing the and same I never, old volunteer stuff. I was and, never asked to do anything. Were in trouble for that, yeah. Be gone with anything. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. All they wanted was my money. They wanted your money. And, and I, I didn't stay very long, just so you and know. And we don't give money anywhere either. Uh, just, I do not. <laughs> just so you know. Yeah. I do not. We don't put money where um, we're not appreciated. So you have you have a note here, and, and, and it says, <laughs> what is the long-term financial plan? Well, as I was thinking through this organization is shutting down, Uh huh. Um, there's there's finances involved and like you said it's always budget there's always some money there's always a budget so what is the plan for what the organization closes for whatever reason um, I know um, let's use our church because I have a physical building uh -huh. a foundation and a trust uh -huh. um, and that combined property is probably worth conservatively around six million a little bit more I, I was being conservative oh I forgot we had the extra part okay so maybe it's seven million between what they have in the trust and the foundation. So just about 10. Oh, okay. All right. That's a bunch of money. $10 million is a crock of funds. So if the church, which is dwindling, mm -hmm. um, couldn't afford to keep the building open and they were going to close it, close the, the mm -hmm. church and have all that property that they had to sell plus the foundation and the trust, how is that, that money going to be distributed? Well, do they have a plan? In each company, in each corporation, and even every family. Every family. This, this applies I, I, to families, too. So we're going to get I, there. And I'm, I'm really saying, your long-term financial plan, you always have, an, have to have an exit strategy. Right. You know, we're, we're getting a few years on us now, and we're looking at our exit strategy mm -hmm. of when, when, when's the time to sell the house and, and, and move, move someplace right. else. And do those things. That's an exit strategy. It's also a budget and financial strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, you have it, to have it, strategies where it kicks it, you in the butt. It includes your materials and your buildings and your people and your finances and all the different parts and pieces of it. But in organizations that we've seen flounder, it doesn't seem like they really have people looking at their finances or having a budget. It really doesn't look like they're looking at the, their people. Well, it, you know, when, when a big store closes down, like, like Toys R Us, all, right. the, all the number of stores across the U.S. And when they close down, that's a number of people without jobs. Without did, jobs. Did they even consider that? 
Did they go to the people and say, hey, look, we're having trouble. We we need to go restructure. Job. Yeah. We need to restructure. You might need to take and reevaluate yeah, your, your plan. How can we help you move on? Um, yeah, because when you, when you multiply that by the, the Kmart's and the Toys R Us and all the Harbor Freight, that's a lot of people. A lot of people. That need a job. But even when when uh, Verizon, you know, bought General Telephone. Okay. And there was a huge amount of us who were asked to leave. Um, there was no plan. There was no plan. There was no plan. And so when, 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 when these organizations, clubs, churches, whatever, if there's no plan, here's what happens. Here's what happens. The people all leave with a bad taste in their mouth. And, <laughs> and when they tell the story, you lose. That story is not a very good one. Mm -hmm. So that corporation is always going to struggle with that bad story. They're, they're going to have a, they probably, Bryson's probably still fighting that. I mean, they've changed their whole business I, I, structure I, I'm dramatically, gonna, but they I'm might still be quiet. fighting that. Okay. I'm going to be quiet. We know nothing. All right. Okay. Now, now let's, 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 Robin really put some good thought into this. And she, she wrote down keeping the organization vital and important. And these are yeah, some ways that there's an upside that we're going to, well, you know, Robin and I always try to take and, and give the positive side. We always try to give you a way to, to put it back into perspective. So if you saw yourself or you saw your company, you saw your church in that top piece, we always try to give you some ways to look at it differently and, and, and kind of, I won't say resurrect it, but I would say <laughs> revive it. Revive it. You um, but, but give us some options. CPR. Give us some know? options whether you really need to close or not. I'm thinking, um, especially in the Kmart mm -hmm. um, venue, we have been hearing for years how their you know gross sales are slipping and everything else. So they've been on a downward plane for, for a long, long time. long time. So we didn't know if there was in that case. I don't know if there was nothing to revive, or they were taking the wrong strategies to revive, or what their deal was. But it it can happen to anybody okay. anytime. So what are, what are these aspects uh, so, needed to be reviewed, um, evaluated? How we, know, we know that um, when we got paid every other week, <laughs> on a, on a, a, that was a long time ago, we knew every two weeks that money was coming in. Um, and occasionally it went up, but not very often. Um, that we had to we had to evaluate every every two weeks. We had to pay bills. Right. We have to there, there, buy food. There were some some standards. There were some standards okay. we knew and we periodically. Knew what, exactly what those right. were going to be, but the food kind of moved in and out. And the food sometimes was one thing was flexible. Right. So you bought more on sale and stored it, and then hoped you didn't have to get run completely out sometimes. But also part of that was you have we had to have money put away for things like car insurance, hot water heater, new hot water heater, new appliances they do break, yeah. um, and things like that. So, but you need to plan those things, and that is one of the things that especially churches. Do not plan on. They never think everything's going to break or wear out. And 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 believe us, folks. We understand where you come from. We we believe God will provide. There's no doubt about it. But I think. But I believe <laughs> God really wants you to be good steward. Yeah, and plan. a good steward of what He provides you, which means planning. We I know right now in our area there are three churches that need roofs, um, and they didn't plan on it. I don't know and, why. And they, I know, I don't, it, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. But they did not plan on it. Okay. Then there's that monthly element. Okay. So monthly. So if you are a business, maybe you need to look at your um, gross and net income. I wouldn't look at that weekly, but monthly over a month. How does that looking? What do you need to do different? You need to stop spending. Um, do you need to stop going to those networking what? groups where it costs you money and you're not no, making what's, any? What's our what, sales? What's, your, what's what's our right. marketing? What's, what's all the these real? pieces? What's the real? And and there's and there's really easy programs nowadays to take and do that. Yeah. I mean, it's not not like we have to do 14 spreadsheets like we just. No, I had to do in the past. I'm still using Excel. Okay. Uh, it gets easy. User friendly. You know, so whatever you use, use make sure you, make sure you look at it. But right. here's, I want to give you a hint here though. When you're looking at it, make sure you share the results with everyone. Uh, oh. Don't make this a, a secret a to the, the top leadership right. people, you know, because here's what happens when the secrets like that are kept by the top leadership, the people out in the, in the, in the pews or out in the company, they make up their own stories. That's right. They make up those own stories long enough, they become real. Um, okay. But you also need to do a quarter review. Sure. And we get those financial things from different companies, yep. you know, quarterly. And we're one of those weird people that read them. So. Or, well, or listen to them or whatever. You know, we kind of sort of not. Okay. Anyway. And then there's annually. 
And you need to have I have an annual thing. And I just read this from a John Maxwell book that he does his annual plan between um, December 26th yep. and 31st every year because that's kind of, a, for most of us, kind of an off dead, dead week. Mm -hmm. um, not a lot going on. Um, and you have time to really, really process that information. I think you have time to do some inner, inner looking. Mm -hmm. I know that's when I look through all the pages I, I, of my day runner mm -hmm. for the year. I, and I, I collect right. names, I collect places, and all sorts of things out of there. And maybe you make, because that's a whole year window, not just the weekly, right. or monthly, or quarterly. It's a whole year window. And you can, you can really make some, um, maybe some better decisions going forward. And, and you need to do that. Okay. People need to so do that. So that, that monthly, quarterly, annually. What's this five-year plan? Well, thing that's you next, and you jumped ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so what I want to know is, since you've been looking at things weekly and mm -hmm. monthly and quarterly and annually, um, do you have a real plan in place? Is there is there an effective plan that you are using for your weekly income and expenses, your monthlies, your quarterlies, your annuals? And and honestly, especially in an organization, not so much a family, but an organization, do you have a five-year plan? Are you looking five years down the road? Because I'm going to tell you something. If you're not looking five years down the road in your yeah. organization, it won't be there in five years. Well, Statistically, I, it will not be. I, it'll be gone. But I think that's huge. And people, some people just really can't um, conceptualize five years. And, and think about this. When you get to be like we are, we're a little bit old older nowadays. Um, that five years, uh, I'm yeah, starting to really look at it seriously. Five years I, I'm really planning that five year. You know, I've been starting mm -hmm. to clean out the attic because I don't. I'm not supposed to be up on the ladder anymore. I've been. I've been getting other things done. Um, I'm really starting to really think about that more and what that plan means. Well, the other thing is yeah. when you get. I mean, like I said, we're in our mid sixties. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> I have to admit that publicly. I'm in my mid sixties now, and Shh. I think if you look at people that are five years older than you, yeah. and look at their physical and mental and financial places and go, do I want to be there or do I want to be somewhere else? Yeah, some, um, some of them are really, really cool, but some of them aren't, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's funny, the most people we hang around with are, are at least 10 years older than we are, and they're, mm -hmm. they're almost as active as we are, so. Yeah, that's, that's not, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so again, we need to apply this plan to um, first to yourself. I, I think to yourself and then to your To your family. family. Then to your home, and then to your other organizations as they spread out. And, and I think sharing this information with oh, yeah. the organizations, you keep it to I, I think that's the that's why Robert and I do uh, what we do is we're encouraging you to share with the organizations. We're I, I've paired back all my organizations now except for one, and that one is the one who didn't ask me. They don't know what their expectations are, so I'm going to try <laughs> to do my best to help them because it's 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 a good organization, mm -hmm. but it is. And all world is dead. It's just needs can we can it <laughs> be revived? Can it be um, re energized? Okay. If you're looking for help in any of this, there's some really good books out there. There are. Um, I read one a few years ago on on how to um, revive your church mm -hmm. with um, some simple steps. Uh, simple, simple things. It had a, a card every week that everybody filled out through in the offering plate, had what your prayer concerns were, whether you liked the sermon. Um, it didn't ask the same questions every week. It was different questions so you could get different bits of information. Um, our church decided not to do that, and the membership is down um, on like 20% maybe. Look, yeah, if, if you, you really, attention. there's some really good books out there, and if, you, and if you're really interested, Freedom. you can give us a call here. At Earth, Wind, Fire, Water, Train, Development, you know, and, and we'll be glad to take and put you on that path. Because the sooner you notice that things are, are, are what's the word we need, uh, the death knell. Um, you need to coming, notice, but you, you start, need to admit. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a you don't. Have, it doesn't have to be get all the way to the end and, and, and you're <laughs> trying to perform CPR, you yeah, know. Yeah, it didn't work. Okay. If you can, if you can look at it and admit what's happening and get started before then, that's that's the key. That's what we're what's what we're encouraging you to do. Right. I start at zero, and you can start at twenty-five, whatever miles per hour. Okay. <laughs> I'd rather start. Not that one. I can drive that, but you know. Yeah, I'd like to start a lot faster than that. Um, yeah. So and I know you drive faster. Now. Oh yeah, so I I can't do twenty five. So um anyway, pay attention to what's going on in your organizations. Understand that these things are happening. You may or may not be aware, depending right. on how involved you are in the orchestration. Do your mile markers. All right, on it's behalf our, of it's our word of the work of the year. There it is, mile markers. On behalf of myself, Dick Powell, and Robin Tal Powell, and the whole Leadership Corner team, we want to say thank you for being a part of today's program. Our hope is that you've received a nugget of, or was, nugget of wisdom or guidance that will help you build your leadership ability. Now, if you have any questions, 
you know, give us a call, 727-422-1833. Send me an email, dick at leadershipwrangler.com. Go to our website, set your very own time, www.leadershipwrangler.com. And when you're looking for that next wonderful speakers to come in and talk to your group about leadership and accountability, make sure you give us a call here at Earth, Wind, Fire, Water, Training Development, 727-422-1833. And until next time, this is DW The Wrangler saying, ride hard, ride fast. <laughs>